Time is relentless. It slides by in just short moments at first, but those moments grow longer as if you're watching the universe slide by where you fall into a black hole. Before you know it, three years have passed by since the last time you made a video. But unless you have passed the event horizon, it's still possible to escape. So, three years, what happened? While I haven't necessarily been falling into a black hole, I have been teaching people about them and starting a hunt for explosive things that black holes and stars might do on really fast timescales. This video won't have much in the way of insights into aspects of the universe or popular science fiction, rather it's a way to get my feet back under me and a general glimpse of what it's like as an astrophysicist. So if you want to hear about the ramblings of an increasingly madman, this is the video for you. What follows are some of the things that astrophysicists do, given three years of meandering around. 2022 was a year of ups and downs that in the end rocketed extremely far up. From the outset, 2022 was going to be a pretty different year for me, since it was the first year that I was teaching. I was given a first year introductory astronomy course to teach, which aimed to cover all aspects of astronomy from the beginning of using the night sky as our cultural record book to the far-flung extreme of exploring the frontiers of our cosmic knowledge. This course was a joy to teach. In my mind, it was like giving two public lectures on astronomy each week, stepping through all aspects of the topic, and talking with the students was also a joy. It's been in the back of my mind for years to use these lectures as the basis of a series on YouTube. A dream or idea we may still yet get. The aspect of teaching that I wasn't so prepared for was how much time it took to run a course. It felt like most of my week disappeared in just preparing the two one-hour lectures and two two-hour tutorials each week. To make matters worse, I found myself with prolonged health problems that definitely slowed me down. In the end, I didn't feel like I had much time or capacity for research, so nothing particularly interesting happened in the first half of 2022. The second half of 2022, however, proved to be a bit more interesting. Once again, I was teaching, but this time it was a second year course that taught students the basics of observing with telescopes and how to do astronomy research projects. The lectures for this course were a little more technical, focusing on the nature of astronomical data analysis, but again, they could lend themselves to a video series if there is interest. On the science side of things, there were more interesting things that started happening in the last half of the year. I was starting to work with students on research projects which continued to snowball as time went on. The biggest project for that year happened in September when a NASA spacecraft slammed into an asteroid at speeds seven times faster than a bullet. The Double Asteroid Redirect Test, or a better known as DART, was an international experiment to understand how asteroids react to being hit with a mass to change their trajectories. In the images received from the spacecraft before impact, we saw spectacular views of the asteroid surface, and the success of the impact was an undeniable achievement in rocket guidance. I was part of the follow-up campaign from the University of Canterbury in New Zealand, where we, alongside other astronomers at observatories across the world, watched the aftermath of the collision millions of kilometers away. In New Zealand, we started observing just a few hours after impact, picking up where telescopes in Chile stopped. Observing at this time was pretty crazy. Initial images from CubeSats that accompanied DART showed an enormous plume of debris where the asteroid Dimorphos was supposed to be. And in our telescope, we saw an incredible tail of material being ejected by the Didymos system. We didn't know if we were watching the aftermath of an interplanetary hit job, a kind of revenge for the dinosaurs 65 million years in the making or just a very perturbed asteroid whose orbit was indeed successfully redirected. As we now know, DART was incredibly successful, showing that we can indeed defend Earth from an asteroid strike, provided we have enough warning. I have half a video script sitting around that goes into more detail and context of the DART mission, and generally Earth defense. This one's back on the to-do list, so it will turn up in the future sometime. Being part of the DART mission was fantastic, but 2022 had some more interesting surprises waiting. Throughout the year, I was working through some fellowship and grant applications in New Zealand. 
Near the end of October, I was awarded a Marsden Fast Start Research Grant, and then just a few weeks later, I was also awarded a Rutherford Postdoctoral Research Fellowship. It was unbelievable. I was two for two. I had money to cover myself for research full time, and money to start building a research group. While 2022 might have started a little bit slow, it could not have ended any better. Now this brings us to 2023. While I had the grants, they didn't necessarily start until nearer the end of the year. So the first half was pretty similar to 2022. Once again, I taught the introductory astronomy course. However, this time I had a final year undergraduate student and a PhD student who started working with me on research projects. The core of my research group was forming and it was a fantastic thing to just watch happen. In June, we submitted the first paper on detecting optical afterglows from gamma ray bursts using NASA's Test Space Telescope. This paper was pretty cool, where for the first time, due to the speed that TESS records images, we were able to see a time delay between the explosion that made the gamma ray burst and the optical afterglow. I've put a link to this paper in the description if you're interested. Almost right after submitting the paper, I then started on a three week tour of New Zealand, giving public lectures every other night as the Beatrice Tinsley lecturer for 2023. This was a fantastic experience where I had the pleasure of meeting people all across the country who were as captivated by astronomy as myself. The last lecture on this tour was recorded, but the audio quality isn't the best. It has been sitting unlisted for YouTube for some time now, but I've made it public alongside this video. As I say, the audio isn't amazing, but hopefully it still is interesting to some of you. Okay, so that is the end of 2023. I switched over to 100% research time, so my focus now turns from teaching and doing other things to doing research to fulfill the goals of my two grants. Reaching those goals required a lot of setup work and not terribly exciting periods of coding and debugging. In the last few months of 2024, things have become a little more exciting as a lot of the preparation work has been completed with my group, which has also grown over the past year. I'm planning on making some videos on the upcoming results, so I won't give too much away here. There are two main results. The first is that we have two cosmology papers, which seem to suggest that an alternative cosmological model, which has no aspect of dark energy, seems to explain the supernova data better than the standard model of cosmology. The second result is something that you'll be able to actually help me out with. We've built a pipeline to search through all of the data from NASA's Test Space Telescope to find things that change in brightness. We can detect anything from asteroids photobombing the images to undiscovered exoplanets and rapid explosions. For now, we're focused on searching for new classes of explosions that appear and disappear on timescales much less than a day. So rapid images are needed to find them. TESS has years of rapid images that cover the entire sky, making it perfect for this search. The downside is that there are an incredible number of things that change in the sky, and we need help sifting through all of the candidates that we find. Although my group is bigger, it's not big enough to search through the tens of thousands of candidates that we have detected. While we can use algorithms to cut the candidates down from millions to tens of thousands, people are able to classify things with a better level of precision and less hand-holding than our algorithms can. So the natural conclusion is to expand my group to include as many people as possible, which is why we're setting up a citizen science project on the Zooniverse platform. This week, our project known as Cosmic Cataclysms is going through beta testing and will be officially launched in the next few months. If you're interested in joining our search for the fastest explosions in the universe, keep an eye out for an upcoming video talking about it in more detail. We need all the help we can get, and it would be great to work with all of you. So that's been an overview of the last three years. I've been lucky in many ways over this time, in no small part thanks to the fantastic people that I've worked with. On the side of future videos, for now at least, they will be a little sporadic since it feels like I'm always quite short of time. But I have written a few, or half written a few, scripts from the past few years which I'm excited to start working on again. So if you have any thoughts or suggestions for video topics, let me know in the comments. I'm always open to suggestions and always keen to hear what people are interested in. 
Now, if you've made it to now, thank you for amusing the ramblings of this astronomer, and I hope to see you in the next video, which hopefully will, won't be three years away.